I'm Allison, and this is my dog, and we live in a tiny house, in an even tinier trailer, traveling the country, taking hikes, and lately I've been taking some time off the road to tend to my neglected cactus collection, and to reinvigorate my love for all plants by totally rebuilding my collection of foliage in eight weeks. I traded my old collection away a couple years ago when I decided to start traveling more. I'll show you just how I managed to cram 140 pots, some of them enormous, into my teeny tiny space. Uh, where, uh, where to start? I don't know. First things first. Before I start buying more plants, I have some maintenance to do on those who have hung on for the last two years. In those two years, I moved them all, struggled with poor lighting in my new house, and left them in the care to only an occasional house sitter. I have plants that need repotting, plants that have pest infestations, and some really, really annoying LED grow light strips that keep falling down. Never again. I'm never buying LED sticky strips again. And it is here, while I'm doing my maintenance, that my foliage buying frenzy begins. Well, guess what just happened to me? Because these things do just happen to me. So I go into the store to buy $3 worth of distilled water, and I come out with this. I paid $30 for this. What I am surprised though with prices since I was last collecting is a variegated version of this just, it just didn't happen back in the day and you just couldn't find them for sale. These days you can find them for sale and I literally saw, it was like two of them um, on a moss pole the other day that $900. I could never on any on any planet in any parallel universe I well there's one planet I could see myself spending $900 on a plant and that's like if it were like a charity auction or something no ma'am not here almost no way no nope, not gonna happen now we also have a lot of vines to trim back this pothos hasn't been trimmed in years and some recent neglect on my part means I now have large chunks of bare vine lining my home. It's not cute. I also have a string of hearts that's been baking in this window since I moved in, and we've baked it all the way down to the floor, so she needs a haircut too. In addition to some repotting I still need to do, I also have a pest infestation. I'm quite sure I know which cactus was the culprit carrying mealybugs and thrips, and while that cactus is long dead due to said pests, it truly has been the gift that kept giving for about 10 months now, unfortunately. All this repotting also means making a huge mess, which is an urgent matter in a tiny house since I can't relegate any of that mess anywhere other than a space I also need to use for something else. So, after a late night of vacuuming, I attempted to step away from the plant madness and go for a hike. Which didn't work out quite like I planned. The road was impassable. Well, is it any surprise that when we aborted our hike, I immediately thought of the plant store that was 30 minutes away from the trailhead? That was immediately what I thought of. And oh my gosh, that blocked road today turned out to be serendipitous because I am so excited about the plant that I found at one of my all-time favorite garden centers in Washington. This variegated string of pearls. She is so cute. Oh my gosh. This will look familiar. This is string of hearts. This is just the variegated string of hearts. On the variegation train, this, this adorable jade I'm pretty excited about. This is something I just haven't seen before. I've never seen this. 
it's a euphorbia one of my biggest cacti is a euphorbia amic euphorbia love me i love euphorbia this euphorbia has such interesting foliage i couldn't resist we also have another string we have a string of turtles which i have wanted for a while i have a string of hearts i have a string of pearls now we have a string of turtles which i think are just stupid cute they do look like little turtle shells so as you can see we're home i only made a few stops on the way back <laughs> I got got by this ficus. It looks like a painting. You're gonna see a lot of variegated plants. I guess that's just what's popular now. I'm okay with it because some of the foliage I got today is gorgeous. It just says in quote marks on this label here, greenies. I've seen begonias that look similar to this. I don't know. It's adorable though. Syndapsis satin, also known as satin pothos. Um, I've never kept begonias before and now I think I have two. A begonia amphioxus. I don't know, it sounds like an antibiotic or something. This was the least rough looking of the three that were in the store and so I grabbed this one. It was going to certainly die in the cactus house. And now at this point you might be thinking to yourself, but Allison, you live in a cactus house. Girl, what are you doing? The begonia is like, this guy needs humidity that I do not have. <laughs> well, there, there's a part two to this thought. So one moment. This if I don't have the proper environment naturally, I can create the proper environment. Begonia like so. I don't know, is this a begonia? I don't know. So I, I played it safe and I bought what I think it needs. Also, glass cloche. Don't be that person who comes home and plants your plant immediately after purchasing. Don't stress the plant out like that. So it turns out that glass cloche wasn't quite what I needed for that extra special begonia. So I ordered a large acrylic mirrored box for displaying all manner of valuable doodads and made the environment more suitable for a queen. This footage was filmed over a few weeks as her condition improved. Well, hello. <laughs> I feel safe to open the terrarium now because we took care of the rather large, red, angry looking spider that had taken up residence in here. It was in the moss, to be fair. I disturbed its home in the bag of moss I brought home for this terrarium, but uh, Buddy had to go. She was growing at an alarming rate, like big, big girl, this unidentified spider was. I just could not allow that to go on in the room where I sleep. Never have I been so glad to own a pair of rubber tongs in my life. I was able to easily reach in and grab said spider. There was a short high speed chase but ultimately I was the victor. So the high humidity, oh, oh, spider web. Oh, I hope there's nobody living in here. Ooh, ooh. Is that something crawling? No, that's more spider web back there. Oh, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out. I hope nothing's under this pot. Okay. Whew. Whew. Look at all this growth back here. Oh, can you see this? Look at how cute. Look at its little clown leaves. Oh my gosh. Look, they're everywhere. Oh, there's leaves on leaves coming in. Oh, I hope you all grow up big. I'm delighted by this now that I'm looking at the backside. Oh, you know what? You could die tomorrow and this would have been $20 well spent. You know that, buddy? Good morning, friends. I just left the store and I may have made a mistake. Really, the mistake was leaving the house this morning. I needed to run one errand this morning and I was ready to go about 30 minutes before the store opened. 
Jones. I have the brilliant idea to kill some time at the home improvement store. You probably know the ending to this story. We got got again. I'm in Lowe's contemplating my life choices and I remember something that, you know, it's a project I've been kind of meaning to do at home and it's something that's been bothering me for a while. I have this really ugly corner in my loft that has my TV in it. I have plugged in and watched this TV once in the year that I have lived here. Why do I even have a TV? I live in a tiny house. I don't want to waste that space anymore. I don't want a TV anymore. So we're going to turn the TV corner into a plant corner today. And I bought all kinds of supplies for that. I mean, not to mention plants. Plant. Plant. Pretty sure it's a uh, watermelon. Peperomia. I mean, look at it. <laughs> That's my best guess. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> and this is what I love about peperomias is they look so different from one another. A new grow light. We have an outlet timer. Upstairs in my loft is covered in carpet. So I got four of these. You don't have to worry about like getting the carpet damp. I guess I better go get the TV out of the loft, huh? Before I put more stuff up there. <laughs> As you'll see, I've set up quite the special challenge for myself. So as I show you what the last couple of months have been like in here, if you have some tips on some of the plants you see, if you see me doing something wrong, shout it out in the comments, sure. Help me not kill my plants. Give me your best tips. I exaggerate, I'm really quite a good indoor gardener. And my house presents a special challenge and opportunity, really, because there are probably half a dozen microclimates in here. Seriously, it's impossible to keep a tiny house like this evenly heated and humidified. My loft is dark, but also dry and warm. My kitchen is humid and coolish to warm because of the location of the kitchen sink, while an arm's reach away in the living room is hot and dry because of the location of the heater. My bedroom has a warm and dry half and a cooler and humid half, again because of a heater, but also a window I like to keep cracked most days. It's pretty wild in here, but like I said, it's an opportunity to find the best possible place for plants with a wide spectrum of light and humidity needs. This is how I've come to have cacti thriving just a few feet away from calatheas and philodendrons, sitting just a half a wall away from succulents. Saturday. I'm wearing my Friday shirt. It's okay. It's all good. It's just that kind of Saturday. We're gonna need to change later anyway because we're going to get dirty. We have some projects to do. Honestly, it got really tedious to film all this planting activity. Since over the course of the last two months, I brought home, acclimated, labeled, and somehow found space for about 40 new plants. This task was made especially difficult since I kept buying new plants before I'd even found a permanent spot for the previous week's haul. So rather than make this the longest, most repetitive time lapse ever of me flinging dirt all over my house for weeks on end, and in the interest of finally finishing this video so we can all get back to the regularly scheduled hiking content, Here's a quick rundown of new members to the family in the past eight weeks. A flapjack succulent, this air plant, ficus elastica, elephant bush, alocasia poly, alocasia hylo beauty, 
rattlesnake prayer plant, triostar prayer plant, herringbone prayer plant, calathea beauty star, calathea peacock, I think, calathea warsawexii, peperomia obtusifolia, peperomia hope, peperomia alba vitata, watermelon peperomia, peperomia graviolens, a wandering dude, Hoya Crimson Queen, Hoya Publicalix, Hoya Curtsii, Variegated Hoya Carii, Hoya Compacta, this jewel orchid, Caladia Magnifica, Variegated String of Hearts, Variegated String of Pearls, String of Turtles, Sansevieria Arenbergii, Begonia Maculata, Begonia Amphioxus, this other Begonia, Hawarthia Gasteria, Zebra Plant, Pothos Enjoy, Syndapsis Pictus, Variegated Jade, Variegated English Ivy, Monstera Adansoniae, Variegated Dyscidia Olantha, Some Sort of Aloe, Euphorbia Tithomoloides, Philodendron Conga Rojo, Lickety Split Philodendron, Philodendron Florida Beauty, Split Leaf Philodendron, Philodendron Pink Princess, Monstera Peru, Dracenia Florida Beauty, Gold Dust Croton, and whatever this, 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 and this are, and because I still love my cacti, an Apuntia Dwarf Rita. Oh, I feel like such a goof.